All right. <laughs> so it started by itself. It started this is Heiko. Heiko, yeah. I've been trying to compose this thing in a time travel scenario. Mm. To um, I should read a bit of it, I suppose. Because it goes all over the bloody place. All of a sudden, while I'm doing it, in one mode, this starts, and Heiko is singing the very song that I'm typing. Yes. <laughs> can you start the song? Let's see if I can find it here. Now I'll start from here, it's uh, Hebrew Dictionary 79, um, Abak, to float away as vapour, as in something to wrestle and grapple with and crush with your hands. This is a computer bible which I've had since uh, 1990, and I was writing this as another go at Look at it from the perspective of time travel. So they're with you. Wake up one night and there's a machine in your bedroom, you step into it and you dial up and you can go any it'll take you anywhere you want to go. So I sort of I'll, I'll make it into a bit of a story, maybe if the kiddies are like it or something like that. As it turned out, um, the events that's been happening as I'm doing this is uh, making it um, very interesting read indeed. Because um, what is in the script that I've imagined as this time machine is going through space trying to show you, for example, what was it like on the very day they laid out the pyramid and these huge white men were there from Palestine, the shepherd kings, and they were angelic sons, those people. And they were laying out the pyramid. Right? But as you go there through his time machine, you see all this vapour rising up. Now, what we have here then is to float away as vapour. And what the vapour is, is a waterfall that is 9,000 feet deep as it flows into the abyss of the centre of the Earth, the Mediterranean. This is the bottomless pit it was. So you could say it's been filled in over time. What it would also show you is beside the pyramid itself was a channel going off to the right and it was 222 miles around. Now I weigh 222 pounds. Uh, this was uh, only written about by Raymond C. Kemp, very, very brilliant scholar. Um, he has this brilliant way of writing, but this terrible way of speaking. And um, if you had a, a voice like Clark Gable, you'd, you'd have the answer to most of the mysteries of the Great Pyramid, which allowed me to then come in to do the finish it off. This thing would divert the flood uh, of the Nile each year into a pit that was 300 feet deep and 222 miles around and in a desert area, flat. Point is, when it was made, where was all the soil put? There's no mound around it like a crater. Is missing. So it had to what? Evaporate evaporate away as dust. Now this comes from um, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was in brackets, white as snow, come up. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Hold on. His throne was like, in brackets, the fiery flame, comma, and in brackets, his wheels as burning fire. What had happened was uh, I'd been locked up in the Port Coquitlam uh, uh, Institute where they put people who have been convicted of threatening to kill their wife. So I did. 
not meant it. Fear him, they can kill both body and soul. Right. Anyhow, that got me into the and committed as um, being a man who was proclaiming to be Christ and the most royal man alive on the 17th of June 1995, which of course is the date of the Star of Bethlehem. The uh, moon above was uh, 77.7%. So at some point it reached the 77777 infinity number, which was directly above the Port Coquitlam Forensic Institute, where I was on the third floor. And uh, this strange little man in the moonlight hovers around the end of my bed <laughs> looking at me. I thought I saw a ghost. <laughs> Maybe I did. So uh, these are some of the things that I was involved in before I got over here and stirring shit out of the Australians. So we just get a phone call from Dex, our uh, MI6 agent, and uh, that'll get him all the back pay as well. Getting back from a phone call, a time frame, and him sending a text back home, we'll call you later, going to bed, crashing out or something, or within 24 hours. Now it's 12,000 miles to London at 500 miles an hour it would take you 24 hours to get there. The only way he could have got there would be either angelic or by their fight as fast as fighter planes traveling Mac 3 or something. <laughs> so it's a time war. So this all came about by me coming up with the idea of making a time travel machine. Now what happened was, with Pauline, I get out after 40 days, after wooing this great huge psychiatrist, telling her what she wanted to know. She's an expert, right? The next thing I'm in there. The first people I meet are a delightful couple and a ferry going back to Port Alberni. <laughs> Over from Scotland they were on holiday. <laughs> So on it goes, angels popping up all over the place. So Pauline never quite got it. She had in, um, been consumed by the um, demons I cast out of, out of the temples in, in the Yucatan. And it's on film. And um, the psychiatrist friend of mine, it was given to him and uh, to actually see demons being cast out by the Messiah. And of course they went into Pauline and then I had to demonstrate by Pauline's actions. So um, when I consistently break the restraint order, um, I do it in a miraculous way. First off, um, we had a cat that was pure white, um, very large cat, Jasper, we call him. And I had a little cat called Sheba. The cat disappeared while we were encamped in the local campground. Because we had to be out of the house on a certain date for the owners to come in to spend the summer. So the cat disappeared. The little dog, I hear, whimpering. And I thought when I was hit by a car in the dark. So I come out of the camper, a round, long walk, and I find in the blackness a little type of spaniel, black. So I said to Paula, give me the suitcase. So I'm watching for the cars coming, she gets a suitcase, throws it over the fence. I cradle this little baby into the suitcase. Then I take her down to the police station to get a vet. And the vet refused to come and I said, you better bloody will come. He was worried about getting paid and it was also three in the morning. So I insisted he come out. So he did. And I guaranteed to pay them, even though I was a pensioner. 
The Lord had 49 skull fractures and survived. And we went to the second house we were looking for the morning of uh, the accident. And the second house was the a lady that said she did have a proper spaniel, but he's at the back. She's at the back. Because they look and the dog's missing. So I said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but the dog's been hit by a car and I was taking it to the vet. And uh, he'd be very grateful to see you. So she does that, and the dog survives. Marcus. One day I'm at the lake, and um, I hear a scratch at the door, open it, and a little dog comes in, a little black doggy, all excited, running around in circles, putting water everywhere. He had jumped out of the boat of the owner, who was out fishing on Sprout Lake, and swam all the way across the lake to me. A proper spaniel that I saved on the way. So later on, she passed away, but uh, it all come about by this cat of ours disappearing. And when we, I go to the vet, there's the cat in the cage. So I said, that's my cat. He said, no, it isn't. It's owned by this little lassie. Indian girl. Native Indian girl. So the cat's gone. Out the lake, she, the same girl, locates me by chance, recognises that she had spoke to me before and asked if she could store her stuff and look after her cat, right? Who was identical to my cat, which I thought was my cat. So I bring the cat to do. So I bring the cat in and I think I'm looking after Pauline's cat. But the other cats wouldn't take to it. Turned out it was her cat. Our cat was still lost. And this cat is a rare cat indeed, a Maine Coon. So there's two, the only two Maine, Maine Coons of this colour in the country. They're in Port Alberni and she's got one and I got one and it ends up being looking after them by me and I thought it was so identical. A clone, absolutely the same as. And I thought, well, the poor thing's traumatised. Right? We've been lost for a month. All right, so I'm getting out of the lunatic asylum. I bamboozled them at every, every turn, come up with an unassertainable IQ and all this kind of stuff. Like and outsmarted their smartest man, a Doc Hanson, who later tried to kill me with Zino, when I invited him to come to my home, the caravan in Coombs. So, um, Pauline calls me via Ken. Got to call her. I call her. I've already broken. If she tapes it, I'm gone. Back to jail. Line. She said, "You've got to come and see me." I can't do that. It's a trap. She's up to the pension I'm going to get. No, she insists. So I go to the coppers and I say, look, my half crow's wife wants to see me. I'm under restraint order. I'm telling you right now, she's demanding I come and see her. I want you to write it down and keep it. I don't get locked up again because she might be trying to trap me. Brilliant move if you're going to try and kill someone. So the cop says, yeah, no problem. Smiles about it. There's a really in on that right? And uh, I go to her place. And she tells me, 
with this story about the sting operation, two people out the back in cars playing the theme from the movie Sting, and then uh, this phone call saying they're going to put me away forever. I got away the last time, but not this time. You can't wait forever. <coughs> Give him this number. And the number is Snow, and it is in... Daniel 7 9. Are you familiar with that now? Daniel 7 9. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, the Ancient of Days. Yes. Judgment is given over to Saint David. And it describes him having hair as white as snow. Right. That's why I call you Ancient of Days, babe. Oh, yes. That's why I was calling you the Ancient of Days ah. when I found you. What did you call me then? When I found you, I ah. started calling you the Ancient of Days. I thought you were being sarcastic. No bad. <laughs> I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Now, I got a tattoo the other day, and picked up another saint along the way. So it's cost me a little bit of pain to get this little spot here, a little dot there and a little dot back up here somewhere and those two spots are nine centimetres apart and that's 900 millimetres 900 days after the murder of my son Trinity was born so it's the 21st of November 900 days weeks, 900 weeks Trinity is born go back from Trinity's birth date 888 weeks, and it gives you the date I married Pauline. So let's get back to Pauline now. She's all panicked. But I know it's all a complete setup. So we look at Daniel 7 9, and you look up the number 7 9, and it is to float away as vapour. Now, I've been writing in this thing that you'll see when we upload it later, this time machine idea, and it takes you back to the Great Pyramid and you see the men laying out the footings and what do they look like, and they're gigantic men that similar to Kukukan and um, Gabriel and all these people that are involved. And um, they could do these miraculous things. They could levitate rock and all that kind of stuff. It's an angel, it's an angel and man right? mixture. They're the angels that didn't fall, so to speak. But they get all these wonderful things they do, and uh, uh, they build things. Indeed. That's why the Freemasons build things. They're trying to emulate what the angels did in the building of pyramids and so forth. But they're absolutely perfect. So um, there's a wrap, uh, a, a wrestling between, because the 79 means wrestling to grapple, to be dust from 80 to crush, uh, and then as it to float away as vapor. Well, as you're going over with this time machine we're talking about now, we all got to go back to Egypt and see what the actual Egyptians were like. They were all fuckwits. So they were mud hut dwellers, and um, the power of the minds of the shepherd kings who came there, the Hiskot people from Palestine, were so powerful they didn't even. I mean, these people are seven feet tall. Right? These people didn't have a chance. Their army said, hey, we're not fighting these giants, right? So these are the non-fallen angels that can do that. And they can mate with women. So the genetic line can be uh, manipulated to perform what the Cain line did. That's why you go to John 8.44, you are of your father the devil. Well, 8.44 is spontaneous. So it's the first murder from the beginning. So what we have then is um, this time machine keeps on flipping back and forth with current information. Now the reader reading this is going to have a 180, then another 180, then another 180, and it becomes like an opiate. So it's very dangerous reading for um, an adult, but children love it. I have no trouble with it because they already know it. 
That's what's all about. Alrighty then. Now, um, Heiko, he starts this beautiful bit of music. Can you play it now? Yes, I'll go back and get a go. Now, what I was saying about this thing I was writing, um, it's all fact, of course, shows you the um, depth of the Mediterranean. And the Mediterranean is 3,600 miles, uh, kilometres long. Now, we've got depths. You see, it sort of drops off suddenly in steps. So, in other words, it's pretty steep. So, where it comes out of Egypt, you see in Alexandria, the sheer drop. You go out from Alexandria to a very short distance. And it's just straight down. Well, this river, the Nile, would run down there, out through, and pour off um, into the Levantine Basin. Now, it is presently... Um, 14,000 feet deep. So at that time, it was dropping over the first edge 9,000 feet. So, as we know that if you look to the left on this when you're doing it, you see Gibraltar. The Rock of Gibraltar. The uh, depths there are um, less than, well, it was going in metres, less than 200 metres. Love, you always know, asked me a question before? Come on, I'll show you. Oh, about the opening yeah. into this. What is this, eh? Yes, I know it's very narrow. Um, okay. And so that is a woman in travail. See the, the nose? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Her arms. Uh, um, you can say the breast if you like it, just whatever. I mean, you can fit it all together. Yeah. But you see the depths here, you come out of Alexandria straight up, boom, you're down 14,000 feet. Mm. Right? Yeah. Very deep. And it's all flat on the bottom. Right? Yeah. It doesn't go like this. It's not rigid. It's a basin. It should do. Yeah. Right? But it's not as flat. Yeah. So they're calling it a basin because it comes down and goes like that. Yeah, so they've got cliffs for... It's all cliffs. Mm. And it's the sediment that makes it form that way. Mm. Right? It, it's dissolved away, if you like. So this is the Mediterranean, metal of the earth. That's what this means. Wow. Okay. So here it is in a birthing canal position, if you like. Now, the Rock of Gibraltar, you go out from here, you go straight up to this program here. We'll have to do this for a while, not um, well, I can zoom in here. Here it is. So you zoom in there. This is Yan Mayan Island, and then there's a central point, and there's a length of the sphere, and it'll show up as we zoom in on this program. See? You now it's starting to show up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go from the centre of this to the Great Pyramid, it's 3168 miles. If you go straight down to the very tip of Europe, the mouth of the Rock of Gibraltar, it's 2424 miles. And then you've got a distance across. Well, that's all in here. I've got this already done, so we can, we can show that on the screen. And it's another computer over there, or well, that one we're looking at. That'll do it. Yours will do it. Oh, I've got mine over there. Isn't so then we've got several miracles we can look at. Uh, for example, this one here is the 888 miles between Eagles Road North, Eagles Road South, down here, Eagle Road. And the street name, this is the town we're in, right, Harcourt. And that line down to the other line, which I'll see if I can move down. To here. Right. And back up to where I was born is 888 miles. And there's the farm in Harcourt right there. So uh, all these things we can show are how miracles everywhere we go, this is miracles, 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 it's endless. Yeah, and I'm speaking of the nine that we were just talking oh, about. Nine. The, oh, the, the thing on the top of my head. The, 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 from centre to centre of the uh, spots yeah. that were experimental the other day. Um, John just walks out, have, walks out having got his first assignment back and he's got 9 out of 10. 
<laughs> so nine is not a happy number. No. Now, so we've got the white of snow, which is Paul ends on about, gives you Daniel 7, 9, free grapple as dust to flow away, and I'm writing a story about in a time machine going back 5,000 years ago. So these huge men are the same men that were with Kukul Khan, the same men who was at Easter Island, all the same description by the local natives. Also, the same description in China of the men that came that looked European-like. They were huge, bearded, white-skinned, blue-eyed, and built these things. These men were capable of intermarrying with the population when necessary to produce a holy race. And that is what the chosen race is all about. These people have chosen themselves and, of course, by choosing themselves, they identify themselves as being the devil. Hello. It ain't that hard. So we have Pauline panicking, thinking that I'm going to get locked up forever. And I just come out of charm school. Now, the number that she's given to warn me was the number for snow, which is I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of they did. In other words, they're going to watch me until the thrones are cast down, because I told them it's got to happen in Australia. When they flew me to Australia, I was flew first class in um, Canadian airline with three air hostesses, lovely ladies, anything you want. And I'm sitting in 1A. The guy sitting next to me, he's the sells plastic bags for the Aga Khan. I said, uh, I should be uh, in the back there. He said, why? And I said, well, I only paid for a, a uh, cargo ticket. He said, oh, no, no. He said, uh, um, he sort of took shit. Um, yes, well, all trading airlines have uh, revamped their planes and they're all first class seats. Said, really? <coughs> Very minimal. So I get up, back in a moment, walk to the door at the back, curtain at the back. Airline stewardess to anything. I said, do you mind backing up there? So she did. And there they are, jammed in like a cattle truck. So I come back and sat down. I look over to the young fellow. I missed one. And this is when I get to um, Hawaii. Uh, then I travel by Qantas and I'm in the smaller seat in the damn plane. As we're coming into land, I go and change into my junk Bond outfit, which was a tuxedo, a uh, slouch hat with two feathers in it, red dancing shoes, Fred Astaire. Isaiah 63, red dancing shoes. I have crushed the grapevine. Grapes. Sour grapes. I don't want them in my kingdom. And this is the blood of the grape story, the parable, right? Which Einstein. What did Einstein say yesterday or this morning? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> about uh, there would never be another war if the youth refused to go. Yes, there would never be another war if the youth refused to go. This is a man who has um, um, been hounded off the internet every time you mention the word Einstein, being an admirer of the luminary Jesus, the Nazarene. Whoa. He's a Jew. So um, I will continue writing this thing and then um, we'll be able to show it as I've edited it uh, on this old Dell here. The reason I can't do it on the other machine, which you think would be normal, is you can't type bars. I'm going to put WWK, you've got to wait a second for the second E. And Ash has got it on her computer as well. 
You're still behaving like it was? Uh, it seems to have improved this morning, I can type. What, double E's and all that kind of stuff? Yes, yes, I can do that, but there's no delay like it was. Yeah. Well, this is the second delay here, still on this one. Well, we're right of So I get flown into Australia, get arrested at the airport, because I told them I was coming, but I was a day late. And that's the 6th of October. The 6th of October was the date that the uh, uh, first um, planet system, solar system, was discovered and announced on 1995, uh, 1995 uh, on the same day, two years before, something like that. No, it's the year before, 95, this is 96, so 365 days after that, I take off for Australia, I land on the 8th, which is the same day that Cook landed in New Zealand, which is 888 miles. Mission with the Harrison clock, my relative, on his way back from Antarctica, where he cited, cited the comet on the 30th of August, which is the point I'm getting to now, in 1769, which was the greatest comet sighted ever, and the first white man to see it, and the first white man to write, record it was Cook, who, when he arrived in New Zealand on the 10th, uh, he killed a man for stealing his sword, for grabbing his sword. So happy days. But he did measure the island, the two islands, and then come to Australia, sailed straight past all these magnificent ports from Jarvis Bay all the way up. Finally gets you to Botany Bay, the last place you'd want to land in. And then four days later, on May the 4th, he sailed out to line up with Julian Day 666 over the mouth of the Hawkesbury where, for that period of time, he was zigzagging back and forth, back and forth until he get to the 666 Julian date number. And he was away from England 666 days at that time and he arrived 666 days after Captain Wallace on the SS Dolphin in Tahiti which is like finding a speck of sand in the middle of a town square. So the winds determine the time that these men arrived on the SS Dolphin, Captain Wallace, followed by Lieutenant Cook on the Pembroke, which had been renamed the Endeavour on April the 6th the previous year, 68. But the Pembrokes are the Marshalls, Earls of Marshall, Earls of Pembroke. William Marshall, being the joining of the William line and the Marshall line, in a marriage between his grandmother, Marshall, who married Magotta's daughters. and a Magotta herself, the daughter of Emigard, the wife of King William Lyon of Scotland, which you'd never hear about. So, I'll try to contact her, I'm in sick cat. I thought he might be smart enough to work it out. No. They devoured by the New Testament. The false notion that evil in the Old Testament was the same as Jesus in the New Testament, as Jesus said he was God, and I am God, and I said I was Jesus. So. I wouldn't do that. I can't kill an ant, which has been relayed to me back by my saint in uh, the resurrection of Muhammad. 
So I've read all these religious books there all to get you here. And um, once you're in heaven, you don't really need a Quran or a Catholic Bible or anything. All you need is a concordance. <laughs> and that's at your fingertips in here. It's now called a computer. So with that, I'll bid you adieu. I'll bid you adieu. <laughs>